Sorry, I didn't mean to catch you off guard. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I remember and I like I laughed. I was like, okay, what was that? <laughs> no. Fortunately, I followed like it did get on. I guess I felt like I was up here most of it. Yeah. But kind of annoyed that I studied so much. <laughs> right. <laughs> How much time I spent memorizing and trying to remember all the things that weren't even on there. Exactly. Uh, what um, what place did you use your or do you have three license for you? I did in Florida. Oh, got that you. I did um, uh, Michigan. Is there a Yeah. And I really liked them because they had like a. Sheet, I guess, and yeah. some of the questions were like identical to the ones like, oh, no. so like, I thought of like, wait, hold on, because there could be that one word that switched right. the whole answer. The trick. Um, right. Yeah, I was a high school agent and really liked it. It was recommended to me people who said do a group on and get that course. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, it was a little like cheesy, you know, they did like silly things and sort of like flops, but oh, yeah. it was a good thing maybe because it was like touch and make those things kind of bring around there. Right, because now you can oh, yeah. go back to that yeah. one moment. Like, them doing their weird little <laughs> right. like jokes. Yeah. Because I like mine too, because like, I think like the video has sounds similar to yours, yeah. where like there's like little cheesy things we like say, or like mm -hmm. there's like a little thing. Like, yeah. Like, 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 remember that thing. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, it's good. And, and I think one of the hard things is like I'm not super patient. So like reading through like the story problem type things are like she went and she bought it in your life. Right. Like, just get to the point. I know. I didn't want to read through the whole thing. <laughs> right. But you kind of had to because we missed like one thing. Right. That and, and sometimes they were right. right. so mm -hmm. I was just thankful. Like, I know. I like I like left my because I did like a like, computer lab kind of thing. Mm -hmm. As soon as I left, I was like, oh my oh, god, that's over here. Yeah. I know. I um, I was on a family vacation when I took it. Right. And um, we were up in Gaylord, and I found a place that was right near there because it just so happened that when I finished my course, and then I also had a full time job, so it worked out really well to take it when I got out there. Right. So, so everyone was sleeping, and I kind of just snuck yeah. out. And like, oh, <laughs> some people knew when I came back. I'm like, that's what I don't want anyone to know in case I didn't. That's it. fair, right? Like, <laughs> surprise, guys! Actually, it's got my license. <laughs> I, even, I even quit my job for vacation. I was like, oh, so I just want to let you know. Oh, really? <laughs> you just said immediately. I'm out. That's what did you do before? I I worked for Carter Lumber. Okay. I um I managed the kitchen and bath. Um, remodel. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Do you like yeah. it or? Mm -hmm. oh. I mean, I like the job. Um, yeah, there were things I liked. I mean, it was really cool, uh, but because of my position, I was it actually preparing me for this. I was the one that called when everything went wrong, so I had to go out to the jobs and. Negotiate like how to fix the problems and the settlements, and you know what we were going to do, order replacements, and things. Or, so, yeah, I feel like that really prepared me for like, inspection because I had to do that all the time. But, um, I myself was a kitchen designer, I think had I been a kitchen designer, I mean, that role might have been more. It would have been easier for me. Right. So uh, yeah. it was it was pain to do. I just did it for a couple years. Oh, no. Yeah, like you said, like when you gave them some good school skill sets. It did. Too. It did. All yeah, and some you know, counsel just working with clients and you know the seller brown. I mean building those everything. So that's true. It was good. It it let me know. That I wanted to do some kind of sales because I wasn't my own sales before, and I wanted to sell something that I can do. Interact with an agent. Hey, how are you? Is this set up for me? Speak. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You ready back? You know, I'm not usual.
So it was just after COVID, and so there were so many um, delays. Remember how the, there was that whole thing of like shipping containers were backed up, oh, and the you yeah. know you um, know well, so she you couldn't get right. Right. Just right. So some people like are like six months to a year out, and they have kitchens torn up, and then there's another the layer. They come in, some of the packages would come in so beat up. So it was, it was a lot of frustration, a lot of, my, my part of it. it was a lot of troubleshooting. Okay, as I'm saying, because then it all comes back to you, and you're like, here's yeah. the one. Yeah, and everybody can make, like, why are you down? Right. Or they'll be like, I can you go to this job, I'm really upset. And they're like, Ooh, <laughs> oh, seriously, so it was frustrated people then. <laughs> to put it mildly. So I had to try to turn it around and, um, you know, diffuse the situation. Right. With as little out of our pocket. I mean, sometimes we had to buy a kitchen bag. And, you know, at one point, no, we then try to stack that kitchen to some, you know, somebody out. That's like, true. Put money back in. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a good experience. Yeah. He said you did that for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. gotcha. What about you? What did you do? Before this, actually, in college. Yeah. So, I got my degree in marketing. And then, when I was telling my parents kind of what I wanted to do, my parents are in sales, so they gave me love the sales industry. Mm -hmm. They know how it works. Then mm -hmm. skin and smooth. Mm -hmm. Started young rather than later. But, mm -hmm. And then, I mean, it just like, especially when you create your own business yeah. and grow it from the ground up. Yeah. So they're like really excited. And they want to take out so I got to have an exam. That, they passed my exam my junior year of college. Okay. So like, you know, as soon as I walked on stage to get my diploma, I wanted to rip right into it. Right? And so my senior year finished that up and now now I'm here. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, I wanted my kids to get into that. And right away when I started to get my exam, they were like, oh, I'm going to do real estate. I'm going to do real estate. Yeah. And then they kind of had a little phase. My daughter, though, I think would, would argue probably with me a little bit. She wants to do, she's doing the work. She's in school for interior design. Oh, nice. So her and I really want to do like a web and all. Yeah. That's really cool. So, you know, I got my own yeah. reality show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course you do. I'm sure that's in her future. Definitely. She's like, I'll be the face. I'm like, what's that supposed to be? <laughs> But that's a really cool part of like, yeah. the business too. It's like whole flipping and design mm -hmm. My aunt, she yeah. just started working on getting her license, but I know she's more interested in like, the design part of it. Like yeah. she doesn't really care for like the whole contracts, negotiations. Yeah. Right? I love all of it. Yeah. Yeah, I love it's like the weird thing. Yeah, I I actually love showing us what's a favorite. I really? love my favorite part of it. I love going home. I don't care if it was seventy thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars. I can't wait to see what's inside and see how she loves it. I think that's what it was like the key factor. Like, yeah. Don't care what the house is. Or yeah, you still get then you can get your client exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can already take a picture for them. And when I'm in there, I'm all, I have to turn it down because I'll be like, oh, you could do this, you could do this, you could do this. Yeah, yeah. you're like, oh, they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, I do. I have to turn it down. And that's something that I have, to, I, hope, I have to read that first because mm -hmm. I can get really excited about it yeah. or I can also see the potential problems. Okay, that makes sense. And it, I don't know, it's only two new parts here. Oh, um, yeah. Um, I yeah. Right <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to there were some. I was just going to say about that that um, there's certain things that sort of stick in my head of um, where and what other things that that often that maybe just a problem. So that's that's a hard lesson. Yeah. You walk in and you're like, "Oops, well, well, I'm not sure if it's got yeah. any more public skills. You just have to answer the questions. I don't ask it. It's just oh, yeah. 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 I'm not sure that's recording.
All right, so we're having a pinch hitter since either, oh, we are recording, okay. Either I, uh, whoops, either I messed up Heidi's schedule or she messed up her own schedule. I'm gonna take the blame for it. Um, as leaders do. As leaders do, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll today, Heidi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not Heidi. Um, well, luckily, yeah, I, can't, I can't be Heidi. Luckily, Charles is a top agent. So we'll be sitting around in my office. Yeah, <laughs> you're doing nothing. So uh so we'll uh we'll do we're gonna yeah, yeah. we're gonna interview Charles today and then I'll do Heidi on the next one. So this is a series that I'm gonna run uh monthly, if not twice a month, where we just bring our top agents in and record the conversation, talk to them, ask them some questions, and then uh, maybe we'll turn this into a podcast. Always wanted to do a podcast. I know. We've always talked about that. So here, first episode. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, obviously you guys, everyone online, ask questions. Um, stop us in the middle if you want, if you have anything that you want to ask Charles. But we're going to do, uh, let's go back to, when did, when did you get into the business? I uh, got my license in the summer of 2011, July of 2011, got married in September of 2011, now went on a honeymoon and realized that I was, I was, I was a dual agent or a dual uh, career. Um, so I got my license and I was, I was a guest service manager at a, at a hotel. Um, that's my background. And it, it was to the point where I absolutely hated going to work every day, and I got my real estate license. How long did you do that? Not long. It wasn't the plan. The plan was to get my real estate license and then transition pretty quickly and do it. But like many people, I had the idea of like, well, I can't afford to, to just jump into this full time. Sure. So I'm going to have to keep my job that I hate and the job that makes me miserable um, to fund my, my life, essentially, so then I can try to launch this real estate career. Right. And I realized very quickly, I realized this on our honeymoon in September of 2011 after getting my license in July and then not really got my license, went to an office. They sat me down at a desk and gave me a phone and said, congratulations, you're a realtor. <laughs> yeah. I'm awesome. <laughs> what, what do realtors do? Then I, I'm like, well, I'm intimidated and I don't know what the hell to do. So I didn't go back and I went and I just worked my job, my 40 hour week job, was miserable. Um, got on our honeymoon, hanging out on the beach. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just not going back. Like, I'm, so I'm done. So, so you get licensed, you, they say, here you go, have at it, here's a desk. And yeah. Phone. yeah. Right. I said, I gotta go find an office. I gotta go find a, a broker or a realtor that can like, I don't want people to like, I don't, I don't need to walk in and be like, Hey, where are the leads? Yeah. Where's the houses to sell? Yeah. But I need somebody to be like, Hey, like, here's a plan or like, here's kind of how you do things. We recommend that you try these things. Like I just needed somebody to teach me or show me, but you weren't getting that. I, I wasn't getting any. Okay. So you go on vacation and then you get on the beach with your wife, honey. Yeah. And you said, I'm not going back to my job. Like what, okay. what inspired you to be like, I'm not going back. I was miserable. I was miserable. As a job. As miserable as the but job. But you had no direction. And I'm like, I want to do this. I want to do real estate. I'm not getting any direction. When we go, when we get back home, yeah, I need to find a brokerage that's going to okay. that that is a fit. That's I. It took me July, August, September. It took me like 90 days to realize like I just need some direction on what to do. Yeah, if I get some direction. I feel pretty confident I can do this. So yeah. I'm done with the job. I'm doing this. I'm diving in, all in, and I'm fine. I'm doing this at a new broker. So I came back, hopped on like Career Builder, yeah, for whatever the websites were in yeah. 2011 yeah. for jobs. Found a couple of postings, showed up for a couple of interviews. Yeah, had yeah. had my suit and my tie on, resume, had a resume in hand. <laughs> they gave me the job. <laughs> I got it. well. I got the job. Congratulations. Yeah, so let's interview. Yeah, they hired me. Yeah. On the spot too. Right? Yeah. 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 Century 21 it was. So you so you come back, yeah. you, you interview, you get the job. Yep. What's next? Um, kind of had somewhat of a training program. I had a broker that was pretty good that took me under his wing and um and kind of showed me, you know, was he was able to give me kind of some some generated leads 
um, showed me like show up, be here. Um, back then there was still floor time. You get yeah. some calls, you get some people to walk in. I was there putting the time in, got to know the agents, got to be around the office. Short sales were a thing. People didn't want to do short sales. Yeah. I didn't have anything else to do. So I said, well, if you don't want to do them, like I, I've got time, so I'll do them. Yeah. So I took everybody in the office that had have a call for a listing and they and they they they'd go ahead and qualify and they'd be like, Oh, it's underwater, it's a short sale. And and they normally just hang up the phone. So to so let's just back up a half a half yeah. step. So to grow your business, your new agent, you you've now got to Century 21. So things yeah. are looking up. Yeah. Yeah. And uh and you're just like, hey, whatever you don't want to do, I'll do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So walk us through that a little bit more. Um, so I was just there. I was there and just kind of trying to be a sponge and, yeah. and take everything in and learn everything I didn't know, right? Learn from some of these experienced agents and what they were doing. There was farming, whether it was open house, nobody wanted to do open houses. I would do open houses. These houses were on the market for you know, a year and a half, yeah. right, at the time. Yeah. So plenty of open house availability. Yeah. So I do open houses. I first open first open house I ever did. I don't need to sidetrack, but this yeah, is no, hey, so for, first go over the following. Yeah, right? first Stories. first open house I ever do um was at this house on Farmington Road. And at the time it was listed for six hundred thousand. You know, this is big, big yeah. this be, you know what year is this? This two this is 2012, like okay. the winter 2012. And I've been on the market for a while. Nice house. Well, they had they'd shut the water off at yeah. this house because it's the winter. And, and so I'm over there doing an open house. And I had my wife bake some cookies, you know, get the aroma going. I had that. We had a few people, you know, in there. And I'm I'm really chatting it up and yeah. really excited. And all of a sudden, this family comes in. And dad comes in. He's like, oh, my God. He's like, oh, thanks. You know, you guys doing an open house? Yeah, you are doing an open house. I try to talk. To him, are you working with anybody? How long you've been looking? Yeah, oh, you know, just, just a little bit. We got an agent, you know, he's got this little kid, you know, he's kind of like shuffling the kid through the house. Yeah. And, and he's like, ah, you know, just ignoring me. Well, I, there's other people. I'm going to spend my attention with these other people. Well, about five minutes goes by and the family, like, all right, we'll go. We got to get going. You know, we'll see you later. And they like out the door. And then another couple comes in and they're working their way through the house. And they come in like, excuse me. Somebody used the restroom <laughs> upstairs, and I don't. I think they plugged the toilet. Yeah. So the they, they used <laughs> they, they used our open house to let little Johnny yeah. pull in, yeah. use the facilities, and right. then yeah. and then check out. Yeah. So I had to figure out what to do. I'm like, oh my god, I've got this, you know, really expensive. Well, let me, let me ask. What yeah. what did they teach you in in, in pre licensing on how to handle that? I miss that. Day. Oh, I missed miss that. Yeah. Miss that day. Right. No, you got to you got to pivot, man. You're, yeah. like, you're like, oh well, we're gonna you know, get on that. We'll work out. Didn't sell the house there. They, finally, we got everybody else. Did get a buyer from it. Okay. Picked up a buyer that we ended up closing on a house a couple of months later. Um, but uh, so the office was was about a mile away. I found a bucket. Went to the office. Filled the bucket up with water. Put it in in the. the the floor passenger seat of my car drove over there, dumped it in the toilet, flushed the toilet. Good to go. Good to go. Good to go. <laughs> right to the next person. So yeah, early days in the business were were rough. So but like, doing the things that we wanted to do. Well, so how long did it take to once you now once you got into an environment that was mm -hmm. better for you? Yeah. What how long did it take for you to get a closing? Do you remember? I think about four months. Because I start I would I started there in the fall. Um you know, it's October, November, and then I, I had a closing in January, end of January, February. Okay, it's been, yeah. but it's it's four months of, like, you're showing up, you're working, you're yeah. doing the things. Yep. Right? And was there any point in this four months where you're like, I, I'm do, I know I'm doing all the stuff, but I'm not seeing the result. Is there any point in that four months where you're like, I think I just, I don't want to do this? No. You just kept no. on? No, I, I, I felt pretty confident that I could figure it out and that it would eventually felt like I was, I was doing the work yeah. and I could see um, the contacts. You, you, I was coming into contacts and these contacts were starting to turn into a little bit different market, right? You have to show some properties and, you know, listings were, were tough to come, 
you know, they're, I mean, they weren't tough to come by, but they were tough to sell. Yeah. Um, so you had to put a little bit more time into it, but it was, I could see that the work was paying off and it was going to be a matter of time before it clicked. Yeah. So then now you got your first closing under your belt, like, yeah. Good. Uh -huh. Take us through the rest of that year. We did, I think I did 13 transactions my, my first year. Amazing. Um, I think my average sale price was like $67,000. Yeah. Um, I sold a house for nineteen thousand dollars, a short sale. Yeah. Listed it, sold it, nineteen thousand. Yeah. yeah. Um, worked with a lot of investors that were looking to buy rental properties, mm -hmm. right? So we were buying, you know, all these these nineteen fifties brick ranches all over Farmington, Livonia, Redford. Yeah. You know, for for twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty thousand. Yeah. Um, so picked up a couple of those clients that would buy five or six houses. Um, so those were good clients for me to have. In these early years when you're building the business up, are you, are you aware of that you need to build in systems or are you just kind of, no, you're just working? No, no, hamster on a wheel. Hamster on a wheel. Yeah. Yeah. The, the idea of, the idea of systems was, was nowhere. It was just kind of a grind. Yeah. So you're just out there, you're calling, you're hoping housing, you're doing all the things mm -hmm. that you think or are being told to do yep. from the leadership and you said the broker kind of took mm -hmm. you way. So you're doing that. So how you that's uh you said 2014. 12. 12, sorry. How long are you at Century 21 total? 2020. 20. Okay, yeah. so eight years. Right there, eight years. So yeah. First year I do seven, yeah, seven years. First year yeah. I do uh 13 units yep. um for very low volume. Yep. Yep. And then the market starts to get better. Yeah. 15, 16, 17. Mm -hmm. How's how's your business increase? What what I got to a point where I, I had plateaued. I was doing about five million. Okay. Um like year two, three, four, five, six, like between five and seven million, somewhere in that range for Four consecutive years. Did the did as you're growing, is your are your, your activities changing? No, no. So you're still doing open houses. You're still doing yeah. calls and and yeah. You're still doing farming. All stuff. Yeah, farming. Yeah. You're doing it all. Yeah. Okay. No real plan in place. Sure, Just, but yeah, I think the point though is like it's not as business got busier. You're going to drop something off. No, you're still doing still it. Still do it. Maybe without intention. Yeah, but you're just still grinding. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. No, just grinding, and 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 thankfully the market shifted, and we our units went up to. I think we had an average sale price got it to about two hundred to yeah. twenty five. Yeah. You know, somewhere in that range, and we were doing probably twenty twenty five units. Yeah. Something like that. Um, not a ton of support, not a lot of direction. So this is the point now. It's just. So you're just grinding and you're doing the things. The idea of, of systems and and plans and this sort of thing, like none of it was on the radar. Right, right. So now, so we're going to kind of speed up. So you left, uh, you left there in 2020. Yep, 2019. 2019. Yeah, fall yep. of 2019. Yep, yep. Um, so what were you, what were you seeking next for your for your career? I did what what started with oh what and we don't have to talk specifically yeah, leaving. Yeah, I just yeah, like that was yeah, a, that was a yeah, pivot the point. pivot yeah the pivot point for me was um I didn't know where I needed to go I didn't know what I did I always say I didn't know what I didn't know and for me it was I was tired of, of trying different things right like it'd be one one year it'd be well I'm gonna I'm gonna go down the the, the Zillow I'm gonna buy Zillow lead. Well, now I'm really going to double down on farming the next year. Let's, be, let's, let's hold there for a minute. Yeah. What made you decide Zillow leads? And it, whether it was yeah. Zillow or Realtor or whatever, yeah. but what made you decide like, hey, I'm going to buy leads? So so where I was saying, where I was going with this is that it was every year I was going to try. So you, you asked me just a moment ago, of like this kept doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yes. But also looking for something else, right? Hey, I want my business to grow. How yeah. can I grow my business? I did five million. I did good. But what can I do to get to the next level? So it was like, well, let me. I, I'm mailing and I'm doing these, you know, it's farming. I'm doing open houses. I've never paid for leads before. Let me go ahead and let me buy Zillow leads. Sure. Let me see if this does. They keep calling me all the time. Finally, I said, yeah, what the hell? Yeah. Well, to be fair, at that time yeah. too, like we were getting a lot of calls from them, right? And people were doing it and. Just, at least from the surface, having success. Yeah. So I so let, let me look at implementing this into my business, and maybe this is what takes me from here to here. Right. Um, 
And at the end of the year, my results were the same. And I said, what the hell? You know, like, I just can't figure out how to break through. Yeah. And and it, that's when um, there was an, I don't remember how it actually all started, but leadership from this office had reached out. Um, oh, the mailing. I sent a mailing. Um, I sent a mailing and the, the team leader at the time got my mailing. Yeah. Um, and he said, hey, there's a pretty cool piece. Um, I like this. And um, he's like, have you ever thought about Keller Williams? I was like, eh, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, right. And um, I but thought I, about Zillow, but not Keller Williams. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, no, no, I'm not yeah. going down that. Oh, right, yeah. Going uh, down that. Yeah. I've heard about that you guys. Yeah, right. You got it over there. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm, over, <laughs> I'm over here with Zillow. Okay? Yeah, right. Um, so, so had a good conversation. Um, opened up kind of the line of communications, had a couple meetings, kind of chatting in it, it, and then just seeing it on paper and started to open my mind to like, oh, there's, there's this is where the idea of like systems and plans. Well, yeah, and that's right. A business. Yeah, right. And, I, and I, you know, I don't want this to turn into no. like a, no, you know, we're all Keller Williams anyway, so you're here in the room, right? Yeah. But I think the important part of this, which I want to drive home is like you knew that something had to change you just maybe didn't know what yeah. and then this meeting and it's like okay and it could have been anybody right but so in the in this like progression of i know i need to get here i just don't know how to get there so, get yeah. This, you know, you yeah. So, for, yeah so for me i i was given the opportunity um yeah definitely not a keller williams cruelly pushing yeah. thing but it sounds like it but i was given the opportunity to go to mega camp yeah so i go to mega camp in august and and this was like the room I needed to be in. I'm like, holy shit! Like here, like I need a plan. Like yeah. I don't know that I need a plan, yeah. and I don't know that I need systems. But here's 50 people yeah. that have a plan and have a system, and it's not like they're reinventing the wheel. Right. It's not that they're doing 12 different things. Right. Each person that got up there did like one thing well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit! I could do that. I could do that. I could do that. I could do that. And I'm like, all right, like, this is what's missing. This is yeah. what I, this is, this, is, it's not the next thing. It's just pick one and become really good at it. Yeah. Um, so that was in August. Okay. So you're in yeah. August. You see this. I yeah. get it. I got what, it. What do you pick? Um, for me, it was really kind of making my sphere. Okay. You took, I didn't Shocker. check this up. Check this up. I didn't even know I had a sphere. I didn't know what a sphere was. Wow. Okay. Right. I just knew that I talked to people and these people would give me business. Yeah. But I didn't really think of it. There was no structure. I, well, I never had time, a CRM. At the time, you're not with Keller Williams. No. You're as a guest. Newsflash. Yeah. He joins Keller Williams. Right. So get yeah. that up. So you're saying I need to I need to figure out what this sphere business. Yeah. Is. What's a sphere? Right. Well, you know, you know your sphere, but like, what's a sphere? And how does that relate to my real estate business? How do I structure that? And yeah, I hear people talk about CRMs, but I'm not paying for one of those. Yeah, things, yeah, right? Right. you know, like yeah. I have a spreadsheet and I've got my notes and my paper and, and Facebook and my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got contacts in my phone. <laughs> yeah. So I know. So it became structuring and organizing my sphere and connecting those dots and and really tapping into that. So it, this is 2019. Do you, yeah. do you remember about how much units or volume you're selling at the time? And we were doing, do it volume. So, so volume went up because prices went up. Our units were about the same. Our average sale price went up, but we were, we we're still doing about 20. Oh, 20 units. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you say we. Me. Okay. Yeah. So yeah that's sorry. important. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Single, single agent. Okay. Um, another thing when I did come over here, the, the one piece transaction coordinator was something that I never thought of. It was happening all over. It wasn't just happening here. Yeah. But it right, was yeah, something yeah. like, hey, like there's this service yep. that's offered. Like maybe you tap into that. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, I don't have to come up with, you know, fifty thousand dollars to hire a, right. an admin. Yeah. I can just get a transaction coordinator to take some of this stuff off my plate and allow me to work with my sphere. Right. Um, so that was that was a really kind of a key point. 
And that's that's what took me from just single agent adding that leverage piece to it. And we I went from 20 units like 2019 to like 30 in 2020 in the middle of the pandemic. Yep. Right. And then from 30 to 40, 40 to you know, we've been in been in that 40 range. Yeah. Um the last couple of years. We've added an admin. Um, we've added agents to our team. Yeah. Um so not really doing a whole lot different. We haven't really implemented five new things. And yeah, I've actually, I've just had the, the Taylor and I met yesterday and I just kind of had this, this realization at, in this meeting was like, you know what? Like I want, I don't like social media. We do social media because it's a part of it. I yep. get it. I've always struggled with, I get it. It makes perfect sense. Post five times a week. Right. Like, put some personal pictures or post in there and yep. put some, yep. some business stuff, mix it up. Um, you know, don't be, don't be salesy on it. People don't care. Like give people some good content. Like it all makes sense. Do videos rather than text. Like it makes sense. It's just something that's not second nature to me. Um, and I, I was kind of realizing like, I don't have to, like, that's not my thing. My thing yeah. is connecting with people through a, a sphere. And you know, you, there's some things that we can do with that. But if, if seeing the numbers and looking at the systems and what my grasping, how many people are in my sphere, and if we make the right contacts, yep. the number of transactions that can come out of that on a yearly basis um, is, is significant. Mm -hmm. and, and if we hyper-focus on that, and then we look at growing that, yep. so your sphere grows from 200 to 300, to 400 and you're still doing the things that you need to do and that's your focus and your focus isn't spent on what am I going to post on Facebook today or yeah. oh my god I need to shoot a video or oh my god like I got to get Zillow leads or oh my god what's my plan around um mailing out to my neighborhood but it just be, it just becomes very clear and focused it's like let me just do this yeah and be very um very what's very just intentional and specific on this one thing. Yeah. And if all the other shit, if I don't get a if I don't get one piece of business from anything else and all my I look I had I had like 34 transactions from our sphere last year. Yeah. There were like eight that were from were either an open oh, house yeah. other, right? Yeah. So and that so, included and that included that included I don't in my sphere and what we include in our sphere, obviously our past clients, but I, I categorize if uh, if it's a repeat client, mm -hmm. I don't categorize that as a sphere deal. I, re I call that a past client. Sure. So yeah. it's a part of our sphere. So, so even separating those out, sphere, when I'm looking at it, is tracking it, is if was it somebody that referred somebody to me? Yeah, I would I would agree with that. You know, and and that was 90. Two percent of our business. How, how many people are in this sphere you're talking about? Two hundred. Okay, so you're getting thirty-eight transactions from two hundred yeah. people. So the the conversion rate that we see in mass is like six to ten percent of our sphere, and you're exceeding yeah. that. But I think it's important that the reason you're exceeding that is because you're focused on that as your one thing. Yeah. Where we see the six to ten, or really under ten, is when it's the sphere is one part of a seven a seven step right. system of everything else but you've nailed this part so as you grow that that at that percentage you have to grow that a lot slower than say i would if i'm focused on five other things right and i wouldn't even say we nailed it sure i would say we've we we were better about it last year yeah 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 but i'm really we're now it was like i said it was yesterday i had a meeting i'm like and forget the rep, forget this stuff. Yeah. Let's just, you know, I think we, we did probably, I would say on a scale of one to 10, how would I rate myself with how we, how we handled our spear last year? I would give it a five. Okay. We really, I think we had. What, what, made, what made you say five instead of two? Be, because I think, I think the year before we were probably at two. Okay. What did you do really good? To make it, what you what you do good? We get we implemented life? our first thirty six touch ah, last year. Okay, for just actually getting something to our our sphere. Yeah, um, and that went out 
and then we turned our 36 touch into a um like a 52 touch we just took yeah. out a monthly newsletter yeah and turned that into a weekly newsletter yeah, yeah. trying to provide relevant value to people okay. our open rates are pretty good at it um so just something like that we didn't even we didn't even do that two years ago we implemented that last year yeah. we we took our our list or people in our sphere and we haphazardly contacted them and communicated them with them throughout the year. Yep. There wasn't a structure and a plan of, of we need to touch every person four times via the phone. Right. Did we track it? Did we do it? Did we not do it? Some people we did, some people we didn't, some fell through. So that's where we were a five. Yeah. You know, this year we want to be a 10. Yeah. Right. Like yep. we're tracking it. Where there's a system in place to make sure that everybody gets touched yep. four times a year yeah. with a phone call. Not and we're not counting touches, newsletters right. aren't a touch. That's just to fill okay, the void in between it. conversations. Okay, so you're not including those as this 36 that's touch. Just there. That's just there. So those, that's the system that it, is your 36 touch actually 36, like like I'm talking to these people. We want to have four real conversations with each person a year okay and in between those conversations you, you just need to have fluff and stuff yeah that if they just wake up one day and think that they, they might know somebody that wants to buy or sell a house you're top of mind you're top of mind because they're not having to rely on the conversation that i had with them right six weeks ago yeah they're every week they they know the conversation I had within six weeks i'm gonna have another one with them in another couple of weeks yeah. but in between they get my newsletters we this is how we use facebook okay this is where facebook's cool so we use facebook to our sphere where we're most most people in our sphere we're friends with on facebook so we'll go through and, and we look at it 10 15 minutes a day where we just go through and, and we we have our list of people. Like, I got to contact these these twenty people are my contacts for the week. So I'll go through and I'll just kind of search on Facebook. Now look, what are they doing? Are they taking a cool trip? Did anybody get a new car? Did anybody's kid graduate? Did anybody have an anniversary? Did we, and now now I can have a plan yep. when I call them. I'm not calling them and be like. Hey Rob, what's up, man? How you doing? I know we talked about six or eight weeks ago. You know, nothing's really changed. You know, interest rates they say are coming down. You know, you know, you're looking to buy or sell real estate. Yeah, I know, Charles. You called me <laughs> right. two weeks ago, and yeah, you didn't. You know, we don't have change. Nothing's really changed. <laughs> That's right. So you have those to to avoid that. Now we can call me like, hey Rob, you know, you know, geez, we just talked like six weeks ago, but I saw you know you guys went to. When you took the family, you guys went to Disney. We're planning a Disney trip. Seemed like really cool. Where'd you guys stay? How was the experience? Was it was it cool? Did you enjoy it, or was it just total chaos? And would you ever do it again? Give me some pointers. Right. And then you have a, a, a conversation about that. A real conversation. A real conversation about something in their life that they wanted to share with the public because they posted it. Right. So I'm not intruding. I'm not intruding on them. I'm right. asking them about something that they want me to ask them about. Yeah. So then we have conversations about that. And then they ask me what's going on in the market. Sure. And then I tell them, uh, well, inventory seems to be down again. I just, you know, we just listed two homes over the last two weeks that sold for significantly over probably what they should have. Yeah. And we had a ton of interest. Prices were, were, were crazy high. There, there's no inventory. We have those conversations. So I'm like, if you know anybody, that needs to sell or somebody that might have a property that's less than perfect yep. that they're not sure if they can sell or how they'd sell it or they're worried that they'd have to do a bunch of stuff all who sell it yeah. like like today would probably be a pretty good day to yeah. have them call me or maybe be reach out to them yeah yeah and they're like oh my god our neighbor we were talking to you the other day you know like this dude's got all kinds of problems but he needs to sell his house cool what's his number i'll reach out to him and give him a call okay so I'm sitting here listening to this like, gosh, this makes sense. I got to do this. And I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm back in 2019, Charles. Yeah. Similar where I'm just doing whatever I need to do without yeah. much intention. What's the first step? Figure out what you're good at. Okay. Figure, so just, just sit down and, and shut everything off. Shut your phone. And just, just sit there and think to yourself, what am I good at? What do I think? And be honest with 
your stuff. Like, yeah. like where where did my where did my business come from? Look at I, I did 10 transactions or I did, I did 20 transactions or 30 or whatever it was. And and where did they come from? How did I how did I receive this business? And what do, what am I like? Where do I think that I sell compared to others in in the market? Uh, that's a great question, right? Where do I yeah. excel that others don't? What do I do? Be your yeah. superpower that yeah. maybe. What do I do that's yeah. better? Yeah. What do people say I do? If people are recognizing something, right? Is there anything that people are like? Oh, you know, hey, you do a really good job with that. Mm -hmm. Or hey, how do you? What's your? What do people pick your brain? Yeah. What do people ask you about? What do yeah. people compliment you about? Where did your referrals come from? What do your clients say about you? Yeah. You know, geez, Rob, every time I, I, I think I have a question, you call me and give me an answer before I can even get it. Oh, Rob's pretty good at communicating. Rob, you're awesome at communication. You're just on top of it. Yeah. All right. So I'm really, really good at communication. I communicate to people. How do I share that message? How do I use that to leverage more business? Yeah. Um, so I would say that. And, and ideally, if it's something you like, Right. Yeah. Find something you're good at and find something you like and then find a way to do business around it. Yeah. OK, so same question, similar question. Um, what if I don't have business now? So I don't know where my units are going to come from. So what do you like? I would just start there. Then. So same but, answer. Yeah, same answer. So what do you what what do you like? What, you, is the, what is the strategy behind that? Because I'll actually do it. I think so. Yeah. Right. You're more likely to you're more likely to do something you enjoy doing. Yeah. Than something. I mean, fun fact. Um, well, no, I can't say total. I was gonna say I don't. I've never door knocked. Okay. But I have. I mean, I've probably knocked on thirty doors total. Total in your whole career. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm, I just I'm, count that as zero. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Yeah. I don't cold call. I don't cold call. No, I hate it. Don't like it. it. Weird, awkward. Okay. I know there's scripts out there. Fizbo's expired. Fizbo's expired. I've probably called 10 Fizbo's. Okay. Um, you don't like it though. No, I don't like it. So you just never I'll call them. I'll call Fizbo's if I have a buyer. Fizbo's. Like legitimately, I, I'm not calling with the right, you know, yeah. with the script. Yeah. Um Let me land, check it out. Land voice, the land voice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. So I, I don't like it. I'm I'm not going to be successful in real estate if that's what I need to do. Yeah. I, I just I my own personality, I'm probably not gonna do it. So I don't so if you if you're brand new to the business and you don't have deals to reference back where they came from, I would say you what where where are you coming from? What what's your background? What's your experience? Are you in retail? Are you in hospitality? Are you in what are you in and what did you excel in there? Yeah. What made you good at your previous job? Yeah. Or your previous career, whatever it is that you were doing. And then how can you leverage that skill in real estate? Yeah. And I would say, like, if you don't know, ask your friends, like you said earlier, like, what, what am I good yeah. at? What do you yeah. think I'm good at? I think real estate, there's a lot of hard truths, right? You have to be really honest with yourself. Um, yeah. You know, and and you have to understand maybe what you're good at and maybe more importantly what you're not mm -hmm. and then kind of like what i was just saying just saying a few minutes ago is find out what you're good at it, double down on that triple down on that know the things that you're not maybe leverage some of that and then just know that some just throw the shit out like, yeah hey i'm not good at that i don't need to do that yeah i don't need to hold call yeah focus on one thing yeah yeah i'm gonna drive myself crazy i'm like well i gotta implement cold calling into I got a call for sale by owners. Like that's our plan. Like right. That's never going to be a plan. Not for your team. In our team. Yeah. Your business is not cold call. Yeah. Business. So it's but somebody who may have a background in a call center or something like that. Like man, I'm good at this. I can bang this stuff up. Awesome. Like you should probably do that. Right. You know, I'm immune. You know, people are, hey, I'm immune to people telling me to like, you know, kick rocks. And, right. Hang up the phone. Like I'm immune to being hung up on. If that if that's your nature, yeah, then you should probably be on the damn phone. Yeah, yeah, that's your superpower. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, just kind of fast forwarding, getting just back onto the, the story here. So yeah. now you're it's two it's 2020. You you're implementing systems. You get you're you're starting to build sphere out. Yep. At what point does things start to come together a little more than just Hey, I'm working on this. Now we're seeing the success from it. And, and now we're kind of getting close to current time. So mm -hmm. it was really between 20 and 
23. Mm -hmm. Where did you, where did that jump go from? I'm doing about 15 to 20 units and now we're doing 20 to 30. So it's where systems get implemented, right? So it's, it's understanding what systems can do. And for me, it was leverage, right? And one thing I wanted, and this, this kind of goes against, depending on how you, you know, the, the MREA book on where your first hire is in this. I think my own personal opinion, I think there can be some, some fluctuation with that, yeah. some flexibility. For me, what I wanted to do, I brought an agent on was the first thing I did. And the reason why I wanted to do that was this was 2021, mm -hmm. 2021, I was buyer heavy and I was spending all of my time driving around, showing houses, writing multiple offers, not getting them. And I was spending 80 hours a week and I've got three little kids at home and my son is ready to play t-ball and wants me to coach. And my daughter's got this going on. Right. And I want to be a part of it. Yeah. So I'm like, what? I needed leverage. I needed to have somebody that could be in that place and show the properties and be a buyer's agent while I could be doing my own personal life. Yeah. Um, so I brought an agent on um, to be specific to buyer's agent. Uh, just be specifically a buyer's agent. Um, and that was, it was, it was an awesome hire that we did that. It worked out really well for a year and a half. Yeah. Um, with, with that. And then we brought on from there, we brought an admin in, um, because what that did is, is allowed me to the personal time back, but then it also allowed me to have more time to focus on the business, to generate more business and more sphere. Yeah. Therefore we need more. We well, and that. you made a good point because I, you know, I mean, obviously, I'm a big fan of MREA. Yeah. And, and about this. Well, I think it, it, you bring up a good point of you, for what you needed at that point in your life and business, it made more sense for you to hire a buyer's agent versus an admin. And I think that that could be argued either way, right? Like I well, say, and, and I guess, but also to the point of the model, I kind of, I still had the transaction coordinator. So that was some admin responsibility leverage. Okay, off. so you did have yeah, a, that was the first move. Is that? But, but I, I I do want to yeah. drive this point home. Is like yeah. you got to know what works for you and where you need that leverage, and then and then make a hire, right? So yeah. you had a transaction coordinator, but you know, like if someone else is like, I really think I've got so many buyers, I don't know what to do. Yeah. I need people out in the field. I, I don't necessarily need the paperwork. The yeah. deal you work with that agent or that hire could be, hey. You're going to do all the offer writing and all the community. Mm -hmm. You're doing it all, but the split that we're going to work out mm -hmm. is going to be win-win. Right. So you could do it that way. It's still it's still following the model. Yeah. At the end of the yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that was that. That's what really kind of that's where the I became we, right? Yeah. And and it was myself and an agent and a transaction coordinator, and then we grew that from. Um, we brought on an admin, right? Um, came on, and and that's been an, an awesome hire. Yeah, I mean that's been huge for you guys, and I think that's the other thing, right? You went from like I'm going to outsource these things to now I'm I'm ready to bring it in house. Yeah, now you've got the control of it in house, so you're not having a third party transaction coordinator. You've got everything happening right, right there. When you and it's and it's somebody that you can work collaboratively with, yeah. collaboratively with, um, and when you are outsourcing all those things, it's it's great at, to to just start right. Yeah. So many people are worried. You got to start. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. You got to start somewhere, and it's the whole fail forward thing. Um, it's not perfect, and no. and you but you find out oh that sucked, but hey this one really worked, and then you realize one of the one of the exercises that we did was like do a list of everything. A list of everything that I do, yep. like on a daily basis. Yep. Like just take a pad of paper and just I just write everything down I do throughout the entire day from the time that I wake up to the time that I, that yeah. that I go to bed. Yeah. And then have Taylor do the same thing. You find that there's a lot more stuff on my list than that's on her list. Yeah. But there's a lot of stuff on this list that could be moved over. Sure. And 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 Taylor's the type of person is like, Give me give it to like give it to yeah. me. Like I, I I need yeah. stuff to do. I yeah, want to be busy. Awesome. Stay busy. Yeah. And and so there's like all this stuff. Some of the stuff you feel like, oh my God, I need to do this. But when you're looking up, like I don't I don't need to do that. That's right. just the time suck for me. 
And then it's not getting done. It just gets pushed from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday. And here we are midday Wednesday. It hasn't gotten done. And it was on my to-do list on Monday. Yeah. yeah. It's like, no, like just get that off. Right. And then the minute you do it, you're like, oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. So now now you can focus on the things that you need to do. So that was that was kind of an exercise that that we did. And then you it's just it's trial and error, it's failing forward, it's it's just doing it. And then you find out. We need to be, get better at this. We need to stop doing this. We need to add this in. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's been the, the best, the best thing for me in, in this business is, has been the, the admin. I think you got to nail it higher. I got, I got very fortunate. It, it's, yeah. Uh, so I've seen a lot of people go through this and myself included four or five people until I got someone that made sense. And I think you got, you, you got lucky, but you also had, a hiring system of career visioning that you followed uh, to get there too, where you know a lot of people don't. So well, and too, that. another thing with that too is it Taylor came out of my sphere, you know, and it was so I put it out to our sphere that we were looking to add an operations person, an admin into our our business. Um, so a lot of times when somebody's coming off the street or you're, you're putting an ad out there. You don't really have a reference or a track record. I mean, you check their references, you look at their, you know, their career visioning, and you look at their resume or whatever. But you don't know. Um, but coming from a firsthand referral, and then doing the interview and doing the career visioning, it's like checks this box, checks this box, yeah, checks this box. Let's yeah, go. yeah. Okay, so uh, we're gonna wrap up. But what's next for the sell your real estate team? Where what's the next? innovation the next step next thing you guys are focusing on uh we've we've got some big goals we want to do 70 units this year right and we want to do 70 units this year by just having so our on our uh our gps one of our one of our main goals is to um develop and create a powerful soi so we took it from two to a five we want it to be a 10 this year Okay, we're doubling our ranking by the end. We of the we year. want we want to rank ourselves at ten for how we handled our sphere of Okay, so let me ask you, what is the one thing that you guys are going to do this year that would take it from a five to a ten? Having our system and our plan in place to communicate with those two hundred people four times a year, specific notes taken, put back into the data in, into our CRM command. Um, and then um, be intentional with that and make sure we touch those points, those that. people specifically. And if we can look back in December and we look back and we go, we hit these 200 people four times a year. I think we're going to see, we're looking at, I would love to see our, 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 our sphere of influence probably do 60 units. Yeah. Well, I think what I really like about this one plan that you've done is it's like, you, you, you know, we got to focus here and we know we're not nailing it and that's okay. We're just going to get better every day, every year. And now you can go from a two to a five and now from a five to a 10 doing one thing. Yeah. It's not 10 things. It's one thing. Right. I think that's where we get in this industry mixed up. And having our absolute best year doing one thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So is there anything else, anything at all that you want to share before we wrap up? Um, you caught me off guard, so I didn't really prepare. Yeah. I didn't really prepare much. Well, I but, appreciate you stepping in yeah, in the eleventh hour. Yeah, I would because I I messed that up. Okay. I would just say, I, I mean, just you know, F it, man. Yeah, go do it. Yeah. Right, yeah. be ready. Be ready. Be be ready and just go. Be and ready. Don't be afraid of. Don't be afraid of failure. You know, failure is part of it. Yeah, best way to learn. Yeah, just go. I don't be afraid. Of it. Yeah, yeah. Any yeah. questions? Cut it loose. Uh, just a quick question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. You uh, shared a lot of insightful yeah. things. Do you just go back to before you had a team? Yeah. So, like, two part question. One, at what point did you realize, okay, I found my groove. So, this is a thing like I'm in it. Yeah. And, and is there anything in terms of systems that you had in place at that moment that basically gave you that foundation? No. And I, I think that it, for me, it was it was realizing that systems were a thing and I needed to implement that. 
Um, so it was, it was just kind of call it maybe fortunate luck, dumb luck, just didn't really know any better. Um, and just, and just doing the work kind of, I, that's where I, where I say, stop, put yourself in a room, shut, shut off the communications and think about what you're good at. And for me, it was like, well, I'm in this networking group and I'm in this networking group and I get a lot of referrals that come from that. They tell me that's called a sphere of influence. Let me let me see how I can connect those dots and nurture that to to grow my business. So it was just kind of a moment, I guess, realizing that this is what I need to be good at. Now let me figure out how I do that. Anything else? I, I have a question. So you yeah. said your sphere is two hundred. Yeah. Um, is that collectively or just you and then the other people that's, have? That's just mine. Okay. So within your group. Yeah. So together. yeah. So with and that and we've got there's like a thousand people like okay. in the database. Okay. And that's part of it too. Is like we're starting to put some plans together mm -hmm. to take people from contacts to like funnel them into becoming sphere. Okay. Uh, the people what we define our sphere of influence is somebody that is has bought sold. Or referred business to us, or somebody that we know. The moment that somebody says, "Hey, do you know somebody that yeah. will can help me buy or sell real estate?" is going to call us. Like that's our sphere. That's mm -hmm. that's me. That I have two hundred of those people okay. um, that are in that. And and that's how we're growing our team. Is is so we've got three people on our team. Taylor, our operations manager, Jeremy, our agent, is having each of them develop their own spheres. I now am, so this was my first year, and I felt, I was happy with the year I had, especially I had some personal things going on, um, but I didn't have systems, so it was mm -hmm. like, I, I I feel like I got lucky. I mean, I was doing the yeah. things and talking. You're doing the work, right? And yeah. posting and, and letting everyone know, yeah. but I need to build, you know, I need the structure and the systems, as you're saying, yeah. so that's, that's interesting to me, because I... I feel a little lost in my database right now because mm -hmm. I have all these people, but there's so many people that I would feel so uncomfortable even calling. I would send them a newsletter yeah. you know, or whatever. So I really, I feel like organizing that, it helps me to see that you actually have the database, but then you categorize. Yeah. Do you have, yeah, do you use command? Is I your... have command, yeah. Okay. That, that's my plan to use it. I'm not using it now effectively. So, I need to learn it more. So you okay. use it, which one thing, just, there's tags. Right. Yeah. So you can put a tag on everybody. So start with that, where you're like, I would feel uncomfortable calling these people. Okay. Um, go through the everybody. Take every. Go through your phone. Go through your wherever you have. Put everybody okay. that you can into, and you can leverage that out, right? Like you can find a way to Excel documents. All right. So you already have them in there. So so spend <laughs> spend spend an hour every day until you get it done. Uh, and and that, and just to interrupt you. They, Unfortunately, the one thing we can't leverage is someone organizing it. Yeah, right. I tried. I, I thought about it. So about yeah. it. And it's like, I mean, I've had my wife help. And yeah. she knows all my people because we've been, we know all the same people, but it's not, it's just you got to do it. Yeah. And you got to right. time block that yeah. in. And as much as it's going to be and painful, yeah. it's, it's actually, great. it actually does, it's not going to take as long as you think. Like I said, if you, if you schedule, schedule an hour a day for a week, you're done. And yeah. it won't take that okay. long unless you've got tens that. of thousands of people. In I agree. Oh, I yeah. And it goes quick if you just and, and on it. just go through them and tag and start with the people that you're comfortable calling. That's, that becomes your sphere. That's the other thing. I felt like this is something that's been tripping me up again, and I'm glad yeah. you're saying that. Is calling people. I don't want to be. I don't. I want to be authentic. That's yeah. that's my whole thing. I think we all do. I want to be authentic. I don't want to just call someone on the street because I saw they had a garage sale. I mean, not that yeah. I wouldn't go have a conversation with them about it. You sure. know. Yeah. But I don't want to trick people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Call everybody yeah. I know. Like yeah. I'm just thinking about you when I wasn't. Like the only reason I'm thinking about you is because your name came up and you know I need people. And that's, so I'm I'm very I'm very. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm very. I'm very, <laughs> I'm very similar to you. Yeah. I think it's real estate. Here, like, I don't want to bother people, right? Yeah. I don't want to bother people. Yeah. So the way, the way, so how I get over that is that's why we do the Facebook searches, yeah. right? And yeah. then, and then we just, love that. and then we put notes. So I have like 10 pages of, of printouts of paper 
of all of the people in our database. Yeah. So then I just, so I know these are Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. All right, I got to touch them all on each of them. So here's my note. This is what I'm going to talk to them about when I call them. Yeah. And that gives me some reason for the, yeah. the purpose of the call. I find that they always want to ask me about real estate. Yeah. So I don't have to bring real estate up. And then the other thing I try to, I try to do, and you, and we can all, everyone in this room can do this is give them value, yeah. right? I always want to give people value. The lady that has the garage sale down the street, you yeah. can be intentional about that and right. give her value, Yeah. right? You can go over there and, and, and snoop around, look around the stuff that she's selling and, $50. you know, spend it, <laughs> yeah. you pay grad sale, you probably spend, you know, 10, right? yeah. 10 or 20 yeah. and, and you just start a conversation yeah. Yeah. and, and, it, yeah. and then it's organic. It's very organic. Yeah. Like, it becomes, and it is all, it's all organic. Yeah. So start with those people that you're comfortable with, yeah. that you're comfortable having a conversation about when they post that their daughter just graduated high school and you can call them and do, you know, Hey, congratulations on that. Here, yeah, right. And we, yeah. um, I'm always, so we do, we'll make comments, right. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you know, Hey, looks cool or whatever, yeah. right. The comment you make there, I think you can do a, a message is better yeah. than a comment. It, a handwritten note is even yeah. better. A phone call is better. Yeah. So yeah. we do like when, and one of the things that we've implemented is so everybody, when they have a birthday, Facebook tells you when everybody's birthday is. Yeah. So we go through, we make sure all of our contacts have it. We send out birthday cards. We just started doing this. We put a dollar scratch off. Yeah. Great. We do the scrap, dollar scratch off yeah. in with the card. And Thanks then so for everyone's birthday, it goes out. And now is, is it from you personally or is it from like your like business? Um, it's person? from me personally written oh yeah. nice. not by me because I can't yeah. write right but um Taylor Taylor does so it has that. nothing about real estate in there it's just no like, just hey happy right. birthday yeah perfect. and we have and we have happy birthday cards I, yeah. I went and we had our printer so I printed off 500 birthday cards 500 thank you cards and 500 congratulations is, is your team name anywhere on the card Yes, our logo's on the card. Okay. okay. Yeah, our logo's on the card, but it's a personal message. Yeah. It's a handwritten, it's a handwritten, don't use AI. It, it's yeah, yeah. Uh, a handwritten personal message specific to them for their happy birthday. That's nice. And we put a we put a scratcher in that. And then we do for when we see when people post like their little kids birthdays, yeah. like everybody does on Facebook yeah. and their clients of ours or people in our sphere will send a birthday card addressed to the child. Yep. And then we put a $5 Amazon gift card. Love that. Nice. And, and I think to a person, every one of those people will either call me. Yeah. Um, they'll either call or text, text and yeah. say, that was so awesome. You know, Johnny loves it. Johnny yeah. loved it. That was the coolest yeah. thing. That's cool. Yeah. We took them. We took him to Legoland for his birthday, and the thing that he thought was the coolest was a card with an Amazon gift right. card. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. like that's what you, yeah, you know, that that's the, and those are the things. So we're we're talking to them four times a year, and then they're getting our newsletter every week, and then they're getting husband gets a card, the wife gets a card, Johnny gets a card, yeah. Cindy gets a card home anniversary card it, what what this is and i talk about this a lot is you can you got to decide where you want to take your business yeah. it can there's two businesses transactional relation relationship transactional businesses there's nothing wrong with that these are what these big mega teams do and it's just the next transaction the next transaction the next transaction or you do a relationship-based business. Relationship-based business is exactly what this is, where he's developing relationships with people because he's a people person, right? Now, again, there's no right or wrong. It's right. where do you want to run in this in this industry? Or what do you want your day-to-day -day look like? People who run transactional businesses are under a lot more stress and yeah. pressure than those who have built true relationships with people because this in real estate, you want to trust that person that's helping you. Yeah. Charles' clients trust him a yeah. lot. Yeah. And, and I'm a competitive person, but I think you have to realize, like, be competitive, but don't, you know, like, 
realize like some of these agents that are putting out these numbers and doing these things, like you don't know what they're, what they're, you know, their yeah. PLs look like. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not a billboard person and I wear jeans and sweatshirts. Yeah. I'm not wearing designer clothes. Like I'm not, I'm not competing with anybody in that nature. Like I'll compete for business. Yeah. But, you know, so, yeah. so yeah. don't find, that's what goes, find it's what you do. Right. Find, be authentic to you, find what you like, find what you love, and then how can you find a way to build a business around it? Love it. That's good. I had a funny thing happen. I had somebody, my name's Jenny, like everybody else my name, my yeah. age, you know, it's a yeah. common name. And somebody texted me and she said, she just texted me something and I knew it wasn't for me. It was pictures of a preschool oh. kids. And I was like, hey, I don't <laughs> have the right Jenny, but... 15 years ago, I taught preschool. That's how I knew this woman. Oh. And I said, but it's great to hear from you. How are you doing? Yeah. And boom, boom, boom. And then I, I'm like, oh, I'm selling real estate now, blah, 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 blah. And I, boom, quit friending her on Facebook. Yep. So yeah. I'm like, yeah. it's nice connecting with you. But yeah. I, then I thought, yeah. I'm going to accidentally call, text everybody something weird and random. <laughs> to start the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong, wrong, Rob. Yeah, oh, right. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. How are you? Yeah, but how are you? Yeah. 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 I mean, it works. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, it's just putting yourself in position to communicate. Yeah. Put your yeah. path in the way of this. Be authentic. Be genuine. Be nice. Right. Yeah. 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 Be nice. Yeah. That's it was hard this fun. morning at the McDonald's drive through but I was <laughs> nice. Did it. I was, I was nice to the point that they gave me my receipt and circled, like, would you mind doing a survey? <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, be nice. Yeah. Right? Like, it, it works. Yeah. yeah. That's, I'm good. Good. That's good stuff. So, yeah. Helpful. Thank you. Anything else? Man, what? imagine if you would have prepared. I know. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. Yeah. Their first podcast episode. There we go. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah,